everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how I've made this very cute little fairy door card. So this is how it looks, it all fits. It's got a little bit of bulk to it, but it will all fit flat and go into the envelope. I've stamped this wonderful image, or um, it's a few images, lots of different stamps just to create this scene. Um, love the little toadstools there. And then I've added a few little glossy accents onto the um, dragonfly there and the bee and also onto the flowers and I put little gemstones there and lots of Nuvo drops. Seem to be using them a lot with this collection. I even love that tiny little doorbell there. But behind the door we have an elf. <laughs> I think he's so cute. So try to make it look like you open the door and it goes into a tunnel and then it'll take you into his you know really cool whimsical little home and uh, it says there make a wish and it's just super cute I really really like this and obviously you could have lots of different things behind that door and uh, yeah really easy to make you can use it any dies you don't have to use the dies that I'm going to use and uh, you know the stamps I'm sure many of you will have really nice stamps that you could use to you know as a an alternative to the ones I'm doing but yeah it's a bit of fun so I hope you enjoy the tutorial Okay, so I've already gone ahead and done lots of bits and pieces. I haven't um, edited in the colouring this time because I've done that in the last video. So, and I have colouring playlists. So if you'd like to go over to that, have a look. And um, but for this one, I did use the Arteza twine markers, and I use those for a card where I made I coloured in a beautiful big flower. So if you'd like to see how those look, then check out that video up here, and you'll be able to just kind of see what those are like. But I've used those today because they're really vibrant and um, yeah, just lots of colour. So I've gone a little bit different with this one because I just want to show you different ways to stamp as well. So with this one here, you'll see that I stamped directly onto this piece. Um, so I just kind of laid them out. And what I've done when, with this one here, it only actually came to about here. So I just continued that freehand and just coloured it in. And the same with these. I kind of like blended it. So I'm a bit of a lazy stamper. I don't, I, I can't, well, I can do the masking and I don't mind doing it. But if I can get away without doing it, then I won't use it. So this is lazy um, stamping in terms of you know a lot of people would mask that off so you get a, a really kind of perfect look but I think if you just go in there freehand you can easily blend it in and I'm sure if I hadn't told you you wouldn't have noticed so that's that one so that's stamped directly onto the paper this one here I've actually stamped and die cut the images separately so I've gone and distressed the background I've added in green to this one and then kind of blended up to the sky the door's going to be here but I'm also going to bring the door right down low this time whereas on the other one it was a bit higher. So this is, I guess, an easier way for someone to do it as well. So I've literally just stamped all three of these images. So this one here, this one, and this one here. Stamped them all, die cut them all separately because you've got the dies there, and then I've just layered them up that way. So that's another way to do it, okay? So that is the Autumn Leaves die set and stamp. And then for the lovely shape, I've used the Stitch Nesting Arches die set. But this would look nice using rectangles, and there is actually the rectangles in this same stitch like distress die set. So um, as always, all the links to the product I've used will be below, but my favorite is him. I'm gonna be using him again so you get to see all the image, because on this one here, you've just got him poking out the side there, but I think he looks quite cute. And that is your Pocket Elf stamp set. But I have used the Make-A-Wish and then it says, sometimes we need a little bit of magic. And I just thought that's really nice. So I've already gone ahead and cut this shape here, which is the second one. You can see it's got all that distressed edge there. And then I just went ahead, used some of my distressed oxides um, inks. I used the Chip Sapphire for the very outer. And at the bottom there I've used Mode Lawn and then in the middle I used a mix of broken china and tumbled glass. So that's given me that kind of sky look there. And then I've distressed the doors using just one of my old Stampin' Up! That's Early Espresso, just to stress all the edges there. We'll talk about the door in a moment. Now we need to make the card base. So you want the next size up, so the larger of the dies. So no matter what dies you're using, you'll want to use the second largest for this piece, which will have your main decoration on, and then the larger one will be for your card base size. You can have them both the same if you want. Once you see what I'm doing, then it will all make sense. So I'm going to just remove this school ball because I don't actually need that anymore. So what I've got here is a piece of 300 GSM card, and I've just, along the long side, I've just found the halfway and scored it in half, okay? And then I'm going to pop this on top, but I'm going to make sure that this left-hand side cutting line is off the edge. So it will mean that it will not cut this part of our card here, which is our, our spine of the card, okay, or the fold. So you want to just butt it right up to the edge there and keep it nice and straight. So I'm going to flip it back over because it's easier for me to do it that way. And I do find, because you're cutting through two pieces of cardstock and mine's thick, 
you will want to use a, um, a shim. I've got my metal shim, but even a few layers of some more thicker cardstock, that will work as well. So I'm just going to run that through my die machine. Okay, so I've run that through and you'll see it's cut all the way through. If you need to help it along a bit, just grab your cutting knife and you can go around. So the front's cut through perfectly. But now we've got our arched card shape. And then that one there you'll see will go over the top. Now I am tempted, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it so that this one, again, I'll bring in here. Can you see I distressed the back there as well so it was all the same color if I bring it up closely. So in, you know, in real life you can see the detail really well but I also done the blue, but I think I'm gonna keep this one against the white. I'm just trying to show different ways of using exactly the same stamp set, even doing you know the same card, but just making those little changes, you know, can really change it up. I'm just gonna have a cup of tea because I feel my voice is going. Okay, I don't usually do that, but sorry. Okay, so now what we wanna do, it's up to you how you do this. So this one here, I stamped everything in black first, and then I cut the door. And um, whereas this time, obviously I stuck everything down because I wanted to see where it was all going to lie. So what you need is again your stamps and you want your dies and I die cut the very smallest one to give me that detail there. So that's the one with all again that distressed detail. Then the next size up which has got that straight edge. So again whatever dies you're using, if you want to create a door then you need to look at kind of your sizes and see which ones you're going to use. But you want to cut two because one's going to go inside and then you've got one on the front. Now to create that kind of faux door look with this one here, I'm just using a brown fine liner and with a ruler first of all I drew some some straight lines and then I just went back over them again and kind of done a bit of a wiggle <laughs> really technical there just to create you know a bit more of a, a worn look I guess so I'm just going along there and just maybe leaving about I don't know just over one eighth of an inch oh I need to do that one again hold my pen down better you want to make sure you do get them um, as straight as possible. There we go. So whenever I'm doing my stamping, it's all these little things that I love to do. But now, if I just zoom in a little bit, just for this bit here, so they're all dead straight, but if you just go back over them and just do, you know, kind of like w little wiggles all the way down, you just, I don't know, just like the effect. <laughs> so it's up to you, you might just want to do thicker, completely straight lines, but I quite like just to add a little bit of you know, something to the, the door there, just create that. And then the little handle that I've used is just using a brad. So I just cut the actual split pin piece off the back, like I do most of the time really. I very rarely use the brads, split pins, for what they're intended to. So just finish that last one. And there we've got our little door. Okay, so then that one I stuck down using some foam pads onto the front. So I'll just do that first. And I'm gonna stick it on the darker one because I want that to be on the front because I think it'll really stand out against the white. And just make sure it's in the center. Okay, so that's the front of the door and that's gonna go inside. So now we need to cut the door out. So like I said, I do. I want this to be right down the bottom this time. All right, like so. So up to you, you can see there I've come up a bit higher, but I wish now I kind of maybe put some grass or something along there. So I'm gonna come down. Now I have got to cut through an extra bit of cardstock there, but it'd be fine. So the cut line for this one, I'm gonna come in a bit there. The cut line for this is gonna be right at the bottom. It's gonna come off, okay? But literally line up along the bottom there because I want the door to run perfectly straight along there, so. Okay, I've just stuck that side down. now. In order to get it so that you just have this side open, okay, what I've found is I've got these plates, these are from my old mini baby blue die cutting machine. Now the B plate is a little bit thinner than the top plate. So you would have to just have a little look around if you've got any smaller plates. If you don't have smaller plates, you're gonna to have to turn it that way and just pop it through your die machine. But I'll show you what you need to do because you need to make sure that your plates don't cover the whole thing. I wanna make sure that all of this cuts apart from this line here. We want this whole side to stay attached so the door can open, okay? So I'm gonna lay this plate, let me grab my base plate. This is gonna sit over this die, but not over this part of the die here. So when, I go, when it goes through my machine, my machine, it will die cut all of this, but not that piece there, which will mean then that this door will open. 
okay so like I said if you don't have that you'll have to use your normal plates and I'll show you what you do there and you would pop this I'd have to use my bigger die machine but you'd have this up the top and you just put your plate up to there like so and run it through so however you do it you just make sure that your plates do not cover this left hand side but keep these old plates or if you've got smaller ones if you play around with your sandwich you might have to add a few shims you might have to play around you might find that by adding a metal shim magnetic shim and just a base plate will be enough you know have a little play around but you'd be surprised and you can actually do some fun you know little um you know details on your card so I'm going to now run that through my machine okay so now don't worry because all that's going to be stuck to our card base in a moment but if I remove this and this is all going to be covered as well it's actually printed <laughs> so I'm not worried about any of that because that's all going to get covered but now if you grab a ruler and stylus and you just want to create a score line nice and straight so I'm going to keep this straight on my mat and line it up there now if you hadn't gone right down to the bottom, yours will just have a cut line along here and then you fold it over that way. But just score down, you know, as best as you can. Like I said, I am going over that cardstock there. But it will all come together in a moment. So now I can just fold that. I will probably end up taking some of that image off because you're not going to see it because the door's going to go over it. But now we've got our door. Taking the door over the top of that one, I've just removed the image there underneath the door so you just want to make sure it, it will line up perfectly because you've used the same die like so and then I'm going to flip it over and stick this one down okay so there's my door next I'm going to add I think I'm going to use my other I'm going to use my other foam strips because I can do a thicker one down that side piece I'm just going to put foam adhesive on the back of this. You don't have to, but I did quite like it slightly raised. And because I'm now sticking mine against the white, um, I just think it will add to it a little bit. So I'm going to put a bit there, and I'm also going to have a tiny bit right at the bottom just to keep that piece in place. And then I'm just going to cover the rest of all of this with foam. And then I'm going to stick this, lift that door up down on here again just focus on that outer edge like so so now we've got our card okay so just make sure that that lifts up because I put the two on together you might find it gets a bit of a you know tighter um, hinged area there so just make sure you can lift that up which I can so now he is going to stick inside and I've just cut the same arch one there the same one that you cut the door the door shape um, you may want to stick it on a larger piece of paper and line it up underneath and, you know what whatever works for you so now this one here it's just going to sit within there make sure it's lined up with the bottom and then I've got the make a wish while I've got the door there so I'm just going to Again, I've popped it on foam just because I think it. if you were posting this the door will kind of obviously go back into that shape if you've got a bit of foam in there it will keep the door just slightly open and that will encourage whoever receives it to open it because you'd be surprised some people may get this and just actually think it's just really pretty on the front and then not actually even open this bit so I'm going to then pop I think I might have this one a bit lower down this time again trying to do the more different just so you can see so that says make a wish. So it's popped open a little bit, which I would rather. And then I've got that wonderful, so cute little doorbell. Or well, yeah, it is a little bell, isn't it? And it's the old school bells. And then that is going to stick just on the top there. Okay, and then I'm going to add some foam onto my sentiment. And this one is going to go, well it's going to have to go there, <laughs> it just fell down a bit out of my hand but that's actually fine. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of foam onto these two. 
and then we'll have this one coming further down there because I've got the sentiment slightly higher up on this card and then the B I'm going to have actually just coming slightly onto my sentiment there like so. Isn't that adorable? So we just need to find a little brad for my handle and then I'm going to finish off with my nuvo drops. Okay so we're going to go for a blue one, blue little handle on this one so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. I've gone way too heavy with that. Oh dear. Hang on. Let's see. No, I think we're just okay. There you go, quite like the blue handle. Right, so while that glue's drying, I am going to use these two colours, which is what I used before. Although I am thinking I might go different. I love the yellow, but I'm thinking of maybe bringing in... Hmm, let me play around. We're going to do the yellow first. So again, I just do all different sizes, bring in a bit of scrap card here. I've still got the dye in that one, but just make sure the air is out. And I'm just going to start popping down a few little dots, all different sizes. And I just think the colours, they work really well and it just adds that kind of whimsical feel to the card. I use these on, like I said, the stand and, um, yeah, the stand and pop and I just, I really liked it. And I love doing just really tiny ones, just almost just kissing the cardstock just so you get a very tiny little blob there. I would use white but then I don't want it to start looking like snow. So I'm going to use that one. Let's see what else we've got here. So I've got a pink glitter. I think I might go for a glittery one. Ah uh, yeah, that's a bit softer. And I just went back in just near what I'd already done. Adding in a few more. There we go, and then, I still haven't finished, I'm then going to add my glossy accents to the dragonfly's body and the wings, so the whole of the dragonfly. And onto the wings of the bee. And then I also covered, like, well, pretty much all of this. It's just, again, it's one of those things that when you've got the card, when it catches in the light, it looks really nice. And then I put a little rhinestone in the very centre of these, the, well, I guess it's the dandelion. It looks a bit cloudy when it goes on, but when it dries clear, it's just a, you know, just a nice little detail. I put white in the centres of those ones, but I think this one I'm going to pop some red. So I'm just going to grab my... A little pick up tool. And then just drop that one in the centre there. And again, that one there. Okay, so there's the two cards. I'll just bring this one up a bit closer now so you can see all those Nuva drops. They will keep the dimension, they won't flatten. So that's why I love using them. You can see again that Nuvo and the glossy accents when it catches the light. It just looks really nice. And then when you open up, you've got the, the little elf inside. I think he's super cute. And I love it. I love how they come together. But you, you can see there the two different styles. So one where I've obviously done the colour all the way around. This one I brought the door up a bit higher. And I've done the stamping directly onto this one, whereas that one I've done it separate. But I think they both look really nice. So it just shows that you can, you know, just, depending on your kind of level, your confidence with card making, you can use the dies in their separate form and it will still create a really nice card. Or you can, like I said, do the the lazy um, layering, I guess, because I just like to join it all up and um, yeah. And also with the blending there, you'll see I didn't go all the way down behind this. I just kind of worked in the blue kind of sky just around them. So it's just different ways to do things. And again, you can see them inside there. And I think I got the colouring yeah, I changed them slightly. Oh, actually, I didn't do any dark dark hair on him. He's got slightly lighter hair, but I think they look very cute. And he's got a green top on in that one. And more yellowy, green checked um, trousers as well. So, yeah, it's just fun. I enjoy just sitting down colouring and just creating up fun little cards. And these ones have been, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm loving this collection. So all the links, as always, will be shared in the description box below. I hope you've enjoyed this fun little fairy door card. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.